Straw Hut Media. Hello on the Rockers. We celebrate the paranormal and the afterlife with Kindred Spirits Adam Barry, hot off the release off of his debut book, Goodbye, Hello, Processing Grief and Understanding Death Through the Paranormal, with my guest co-host, spiritual therapist and past life regressionist Derek Jamison, and me. No experience with the paranormal, just my dating life. Your favorite host with the sassy most. Raise a glass, let the drinks begin. It's gonna go deep. It's on the rocks. <laughs> Life is a banquet, and most poor suckers are starving to death. I'd like to propose a toast. This is On the Rocks with Alexander, where I drink with your favorite celebrities as we talk about fashion, entertainment, pop culture, reality TV, and, well, that's about it. So pop a cork, lean back, and raise a glass to On the Rocks. Fasten your seat. It's going to be a bumpy night. Lord have mercy. Buttons and bows and pantyhose on the Rocks podcast, a place where we're too glam to give a damn. Okay, before we start talking about the afterlife, I need to talk about the today life. More importantly, Black Friday. What happened to Black Friday deals where you could get like a TV for like 50 bucks? Did anybody else notice this year? All of the ads and commercials were like 10% off, 20% off. That is not Black Friday. It's supposed to mean deals. Um, I don't get out of bed for like less than 50%. Talk about spooky. Are our Black Friday deals just a ghost? Oh, did you see that lead in? Did you see? Okay, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> I miss Black Friday where they used to be. Anyway, follow us on Instagram and TikTok at On The Rocks on air and on Facebook on The Rocks Radio Show. Send me an email. Book me for a pride, wedding, funeral, quinceanera, bris. I don't care. I will be there. Also send us your guest requests, your guest questions, and your comments at info at on the rocks radio show .com. The show is presented by Straw Hut Media. You can watch and or listen to our now over 330 episodes at on the rocks radio show .com. You can watch us on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and the TV app. Facebook Watch, streaming with pride on SVTV and on Channel 31 um, in Boston of all places. Lucky you Boston. Um, also, we tape live at UBN Go Studios in Burbank Media Center. Okay, let's get the show on the road. My guest co-host today, coming back to On the Rocks, Derek Jamison, um, a, a celebrated singer-songwriter in the music world. Um, but did you know, and it's something we talked about during his initial On the Rocks visit, about his spiritual work. Along with his music, he works with countless people in spiritual development and is a quantum healing hypnosis technique practitioner who guides people in past life regression work. His connection to the spirit world began at a young age when he started reading tarot cards for a Halloween event. Today, he used uh, these developed skills as a celebrity regressionist and tarot reader in Hollywood. Spiritual work has included stars from HBO's Euphoria, Netflix is the Queen's Gambit and soundtrack, The Big Bang Theory, and many more. He is featured in People Magazine, Thrive Global, Wealth Insider, and also GED Magazine um, for his career and spiritual instruction. Please welcome back to On the Rocks, Derek Jameson. Why, thank you. That that introduction was quite. Woo! The, that was my cardio that was for the week. Quite like, I'm the done. introduction. I'm done. I was like, wow, I just got read. <laughs> yes, thank you. Speaking of reading, so the way you got into this, uh, uh, you were worked at like a big theme park. Yeah. And for Halloween, they wanted you to read up on how to do tarot, mm -hmm. not knowing that you were going to connect like that, but it scared you. Right. Well, yeah, I just wanted to make extra money, you know, so I stayed after the Halloween event. And it was like my manager for the department was like, I'll just teach you how to do it. And you'll read the symbols like this, but it was very real to me. And I was just kind of going with the flow. But that's when a lot of the spiritual connection started happening and a lot of darker things took place. But it was too much. Um, so you left. But like what brought you back to the spiritual world? Uh, I was playing music in Dallas with a friend of mine for an event. And uh, I went to a museum and something called me over to the Greek, the ancient Greek displays. And it had like fourth century gold in there these old statues. And in the moment, my like chest tightened up. I started breathing really heavy. I started having this crazy anxiety and I don't get anxious like that. Um, and I got this big message that came through. It was like, you have to do this again. It's time to get back into this. And I came home and I said, if we can do it from the light and from good energy rather than what I experienced before, I'm down. And so here we are. And you were always obsessed with like ancient cultures in Egypt. <clears throat> yeah, I had always, <clears throat> sorry, a connection with ancient Egypt. Um, I had been to Greece. Egypt is more my connection. And I've been there twice. Um, I was there on 9-11 when 9-11 happened. I was actually at a temple along the Nile River. I think that was more synchronistic than anything. I don't think that things just happen to happen. I think that there's stuff that aligns with that. So I do have connection with that 
the ancient cultures and past lives and all that stuff. That's where that all like ties in. Yeah. Well, we're going to definitely talk about that because uh, um, a part of Goodbye Hello is about past lives. And I've always found the topic interesting, um, fascinating. Um, and this kind of goes into what happens to us in the afterlife and everything. So I can't wait to talk about that. Um, you also work with celebrities, which, you know, I'm obsessed with celebrities. Are Hollywood spiritual problems any different than the rest of us? No, not really. But I do find that by working with people who are more in the limelight or in front of the camera or famous musicians, they have a really big leadership role that they take on. And a lot of the stuff comes for that comes forward for them is showing them how that that laced through other past lifetimes and why they're a leader in this lifetime and the importance of being in front of the camera and being a channel for spirit or energy and how they're what they're here to do at this particular time in our consciousness level on the earth. So that's what's a beautiful thing about the the process is sitting with somebody who is on these Netflix shows or big movies or doing big musical things and letting them see the actual power that they've possessed through other lifetimes and what they're here to do now. That's what's cool about it. Interesting. Yeah. If I had any connection to the paranormal life, I'd be get like get at my Ouija board. And I know it's not simplistic like that. I'm just I'm playing like the fool. But I'd be like my Ouija board. I'd be like, OK, Judy Garland, like, <laughs> like, where are you, girl? Like, let's chat. You know, let's sing a trolley song t together. That's all I would be doing. Or Liberace <laughs> or Paul Lind. Like, I'd be focusing on that. Yeah. <laughs> But it's not like that. We're going to find out why it's not that easy. <laughs> uh, I want to welcome our, our man of the hour, Adam Barry, uh, co-star and executive producer of the hit television series Spirits uh, on Travel Channel. His love and passion for the paranormal ignited from an extremely haunting experience he had in Gettysburg, which he's going to share a little bit with us. Um, it's an experience. Um, and after many years of studying, researching, and founding his own paranormal research team with his husband, Ben, he was asked to join the Sci-Fi Channel original series Ghost Hunter Hunter's Academy, um, which was a competition reality show. It tested the strengths of investigators from around the country, and Adam proved to be the best of the best by winning, and was awarded a spot on the TAPS team uh, and the original series Ghost Hunters. He likes to say he was also awarded Amy Bruni as his prize because the two paired up and have since become a powerhouse um, and friends, uh, staunch friends in real life. With similar beliefs and styles, Adam and Amy possess the capabilities to connect to those in the afterlife with uncanny accuracy you watch one episode of Kindred Spirits and you're just hooked uh, now after seven seasons focusing on helping families and spirits alike they have traveled the country changing the way the world thinks about ghosts and what happens after we shuffle off this mortal coil when he isn't looking for ghosts this is so fascinating he's the executive director of the Peregrine Theater Ensemble which is a non-profit theater company based in Provincetown uh, this uh, educational summer theater program produces some of the most spectacular musicals and plays on the cape while also nurturing young actors in a professional working environment because you know Adam has so much time he can just do that he also sits on the board of directors for Tim's Fund, a nonprofit scholarship program created to support social activists who change the world through art, music, literature, and filmmaking. And Adam's hot new book release, Goodbye Hello, Processing Grief and Understanding Death Through the Paranormal, is a definite, definite page turner. Um, and though it seems like it's a dark theme, is actually a perfect holiday gift for anyone going through this season with loss. And who hasn't experienced loss, by the way? Um, in the book, he shares his personal stories, colleague insights from Chip Coffee and Tyler Henry, among others, and research to dive into these hot button questions. What happens after we die? Is there life after death? What about heaven? And when I tell you this is a great holiday gift, people are like, what? Grief? Holiday? I was like, yeah. All of us experience some sort of grief during the holidays. It's a tough time. But it's done in such a loving and entertainment way. Um, the book is so... What you take away from it, I'm sure everybody's going to take something away. Um, but there's a joy and there's a hope. Um, and there's just a beauty in this book. Um, I li you can tell by like the jacket, whatever. Like I couldn't put it down. <laughs> it's like I, I had to go somewhere. I'm like, I'm going to read it in the Uber. I'm going to read it in the lobby. Like I, I read it in one sitting. Uh, please welcome Adam Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. There we go. Putting the spirits in the spirits. <laughs> uh, before we get into your paranormal life, something that I have discovered as of late is this huge theater you've had and, and lead. <laughs> How do you go from growing up in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, to getting your BFA in musical theater from the Boston Conservatory? <laughs> Like talent. Oh, oh talent. there we go. There we go. Right away. <laughs> but what was your exposure to theater in Alabama? You know, here we consider yeah. Alabama like not 
the center of the- yeah i tell so i grew up in muscle muscle shoals alabama and anyone who's seen that um there's a netflix special called muscle shoals which talks about the you know how it was the recording capital of the south before memphis and nashville took over there's fame recording studios there everybody recorded there from aretha franklin to jackson five uh uh the swampers was a kit band that played for everyone aerosmith recorded there so um growing up uh, Liza Minnelli recorded there with oh, Peter Allen. I mean, yes, think about that. Yes. Um, yeah, my father has <laughs> photographs of Liza Minnelli and Peter Allen in a local bar, like just hanging out, which I think is the craziest thing oh I've my ever God. Seen, heard in my life. That is but insane. Like, so growing up, it was like, I want to be a singer or like I want to be on in theater. You know, I was bit by the theater bug when I was very, very young. And no one around me said, you can't do that because we were all acclimated to this environment where music and the music mm. industry was like around us. Uh, our band program had more money than the football team. That's so, that does not happen. Big, <laughs> no, especially in Alabama. So I, I grew up surrounded by people that uh, nurtured our desires to perform and to be outgoing. And of course uh, that's who I was as a kid. And I decided, you know, I'm going to I'm going to do this for a living or I'm going to try to. And so I went I auditioned for the Boston Conservatory um, and my father said to me point blank after I got in, you know, I think my, after my first semester freshman year, he says, you know, I didn't think you were going to get in because I didn't know how to compare you to anyone else. Like, I just hmm. didn't know what your talent, you know, talent lies like yeah. he's like, Cause you didn't get it from me. <laughs> so uh I, I think listen i think i got lucky i was passionate about it i was obsessed with it uh and i did it all the time and it i was fortunate and lucky enough to get to go to school to do that and i carry it through with the uh, uh, peregrine theater ensemble in Provincetown. you know what i love is how your kind of theater life lay this destiny for your paranormal life um sharing mm-hmm. sharing with our listeners you were touring getting your equity uh card with theater works usa if anybody knows that theater works usa <laughs> yeah. when you happened upon a chance ghost tour in gettysburg uh, while performing at the gettysburg theater um we know from your past interviews and from your experience that that changed your life forever because of that paranormal experience um, but that wasn't your very first experience. Didn't you have a few brushes when you were when you were a youngin? Yeah, when I was a kid, uh, I was scared. You know, I, I was scared of the witch from Wizard of Oz, which is actually true. Uh, but I, I have her picture bad. hanging in my lid. That's that's a true thing. It's like, is that a family photo? I'm like, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, I did. I grew up in a uh, a house that my parents rented uh, before you know before I mean, like from birth to like fourth grade, and they uh moved into this house and uh, a man who played santa claus on local television uh lived there with his family and they were having a cocktail party and my parents went over and they said we're moving out do you want to uh rent this house because i know you're looking for one and they said yes and he said you know i have to tell you something this house is haunted and like any really good start of an A24 horror movie, my father yes. was like, I don't care, and moved us in to this house. <laughs> that literally <laughs> is the plot yeah. of every horror film. <laughs> exactly. And so there was this ghost that they called Gertrude, a uh, lady. And I, you know, okay, Gertrude. I would okay. hear Gertrude. I know. Okay, yeah, Gertrude. Okay, Gertrude. You know, she's I down to party. <laughs> good old Gertie. You know, listen, Gertie had things to do because they said <laughs> they said i have to tell you the story so they said you know we came home one day and there was this mirror that was leaning up against the wall on top of a dresser with all of these things on top of the dresser like a there was like a jewelry box and like makeup and perfume and like breakable items and they said we left the house we came back and the mirror uh was all the way across the room perfectly fine in a dot and nobody moved it. Nobody was in the house and nothing broke on top of the dresser. So it didn't fall and break anything. Yeah. And again, an A24 movie. Mm. My father was like, cool beans. I'm moving in because <laughs> I need more space. <laughs> <laughs> so for me personally, I would hear uh, footsteps going down into the basement where the laundry was uh, and my parents sitting in front of me. Uh, and, and they weren't down there, you know, or like somebody going down into the basement or coming up from the basement at very odd hours of the night where I know it's not my parents. I can see them sitting where they're sitting. Um, things would disappear uh, all the time and end up in another location. My mother complained that her makeup 
was disappearing and it wasn't me yet. So, <laughs> it was Gertrude. It, Girl, she was, she was gonna look good in the afterlife. It was Gertrude. And That's then what's funny. crazy is like, I don't know if Gertrude had a dog. And now like, this is the first time I'm actually putting this together, which is stupid. Um, I'm one of the, the like the biggest experience I ever had when I was a kid that kind of changed me was I woke up in the middle of the night and there was a dog. I could hear a dog scratching on the bathroom door mm-hmm. right outside of my bedroom. And I shared the bedroom with my brother. And then I could hear the dog walking into the room. You could hear his nails on the hardwood floor. You could hear like the jingle of the yeah. dog tag. And when it got to the television, we had one of those uh, tube TVs that you would, uh, when you turned off, you press the knob in and yeah. the TV would like glow a little bit after yeah, you yeah. did that. Right. So when the sound got to the television, the, the TV would glow a little bit and then dissipate and then it would start all over again. There was a scratch, 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 walk, 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 glow. That was fresh. Scratch, 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 walk, 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 glow. And I'm looking for a dog. I don't see one. I'm. We didn't have a pet. I'm rationalizing it. I'm saying maybe it's my Aunt Patsy because she had a dog and sometimes she would stay over and like, Maybe her dog is here. But again, I don't see a dog. And this happens for about, you know, three to five minutes where my little brain is trying to piece together. And when I finally realize that is happening is something that I cannot explain, I like grabbed the bed sheets next to me and I just said, stop as loud as I could. Weirdly, my brother didn't wake up son of a you know i wanted him to wake up and i couldn't exit because the sound was coming in the room and that's where my parents room was anyway so as soon as i yelled stop the sound completely quit and there was this weird moment of understanding that like what was happening wasn't uh natural like it was supernatural and i could I, i understood that as a kid And this weird sense of calm came over me, like, cool, Mm -hmm. that happened, and I can control it, or whatever. And I went back to sleep. And my mom didn't actually believe uh, any any sort of uh, that the house was haunted, because I had come up to her a number of times saying, like, I'm I'm hearing these footsteps, or things are missing. And she didn't really pay much attention to it until that story. Because she was like, that's weird. Like, it's not your normal ghost story it's not a lady in white walking down a staircase it is the sound of a uh, residual sound of a dog running around in a room which is so bizarre so she believed me at that point um but did she let me know that she believed me not until i was almost 40 (laughs) they didn't want to scare they didn't want to scare and what i love about your book goodbye hello is um it's full of different stories it takes that that ghost about like that Victorian woman down the stairs, even though that does exist as well. But it, the book makes paranormal experience so intimate. Cause again, we also think about hauntings, somebody from the 17th century or, you know, from the 1800, you know, of that. Sure. And it brings it so personally. And so now it's paranormal experiences you have had with historical figures as well, but also um, a modern take and how it's mm-hmm. not that scary ghost in the background it's some somebody trying to reach out somebody trying to make contact trying to say hello or just be like hey i'm here there's nothing malicious there's nothing evil about it um you know some stories can be dark and a little sad but sometimes it's just hey i'm here and we're in the same space and it's like okay and i think as kids we're all we're more open to that in our youth i've had experiences you could probably every kid has probably had some experience because they were so in tune Mm -hmm. and they weren't uh, filled with the stigma of, you know, later when you learn to unlearn certain things. Sure. And so, well, yeah. You, yeah, you find that you hear things that um, other people can't, correct? Like you find you hear things on other. Le- yeah, exactly. And you were hearing that from when you were a kid um, and you were hearing those subtle layers of spirit energy, which I th- find fascinating. Do you still find that you hear those things these days that other people cannot I think it is like, I I think like Alexander said, so like, I think we lose our imagination at a certain point. And as you grow from being a child to knowing you have responsibilities and knowing that the world expects something of you, you start throwing away your imagination. So as a kid, you could pick up a stick and that is a sword. You cannot change that kid's mind about that, right? They are more open to everything that's around them. They're accepting, they're receiving, they're giving out information. 
And I think as you grow older, it stops because you feel like you have to grow up, Mm -hmm. right? But as an actor, as an entertainer, we spend our lives playing other people. We spend our lives playing pretend as real as possible for other people. And I think for me, that actually, when you talk about, uh, you know, growing up being in theater, I think that actually helped me op- stay open as an individual, right? Like I could, I, I don't mind receiving an information and, and sharing information. And so I do think it is about being open and learning how to access that part of your brain Again, do that through meditation. You can do that through just ghost hunting. Um, I don't say that I am, am psychic. Like I can't connect you with your past loved one, but I can walk into a room and I can tell you whether or not I feel something is there. And it's the the way that I describe it for people that don't understand is when you go visit a house that you're going to rent or an apartment that you're going to rent or buy or something, you walk in and you say, oh, it feels really great in here. Or you walk in and you're like, you know, something feels off. There's just something about it that feels off. It's the same concept, except you're doing it in a place that supposedly has ghosts. And a uh, room and you're like, oh, it feels heavy in here. Yep. Like the, the environment feels really heavy. Let's sit here for a minute and see if we can get any interaction. And I think recognizing that takes uh, it, it takes some effort. You have to sort of let that, uh, you, you have to find your inner child. It sounds crazy, but you sort of have to open that lev- that like portion of your brain back up to say, you know, I'm okay and I'm accepting of what the environment can offer me around me. And I'm going to recognize when things shift a little bit. And then once you start recognizing that, then you're more in tune to possible spirits that are in your space. Yeah. I think it's so interesting as kids, our parents' society tells us, stop believing in these silly things that you can't see or prove or such as making, you know, a stick into a sword. Yet, and however you feel about religion, we're told in another way, the older you get, believe more blindly. Don't ask questions. Mm -hmm. Believe in things that you can't see or feel sometimes. And it's it's such a weird juxtaposition of those two passing things. It's like, okay. Um, so yeah. I want to talk about something you do so well in your book right away is you kind of classify certain kinds of paranormal activity, of hauntings, just to, just to put it simply. So what you experience in Gettysburg, and for our viewers um, that, that don't know, um, Adam literally experienced a residual haunting of a Gettysburg battle. And maybe you can touch a little and then kind of expand on the different kinds of haunts um, and you do it so well in the book, but you know, there's haunts that that they don't know that they're there. There's haunts that they know yeah. that they haven't passed. There's residual. There, there's all these classifications. It's like this is a guidebook, li- literally. Listen, no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no pressure at all whatsoever. Uh, uh, so, I mean, so Gettysburg for me was a life changing experience. I was at a point in 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 my life where I had had paranormal experiences growing up, and it was something that I really enjoyed talking about and observing and exploring but my focus was very different my focus was this theater works usa tour get your equity card go back to new york you know pound the pavement yeah. uh and be on broadway and yes it can still happen uh, hey. Went out there um but i want to see kindred I, spirits but, the musical <laughs> i want to see adam barry in a musical on broadway yes. so i don't care what it's called it could be called boot the musical and i will sing the <laughs> number and win the game anyway um So I think, so for me at Gettysburg, it was one of those things where it was a show me now, or I'm going to possibly not put as much into this as I want to, you know? And so I went on a ghost tour. We ended on the battlefield uh, out near where the school is across from the Farnsworth house, for those of you who who know Gettysburg. And he was explaining the field and he was saying all of these things happen. They kind of see apparitions in the trees and I said, can I go down there? And he said, I wouldn't. And so like, again, like any good <laughs> horror movie, I went down by myself <laughs> across this field. And I actually revisited this at the beginning of November because we did a big event in Gettysburg. And I we took all of our VIP uh, investigators down to where this experience happened. And I was, uh, I was telling them, I was like, my God, this is further than I can remember. Like, this is further. Uh, and it, it took guts. I mean, look, when you're young, you don't care. Like right. you will literally do anything. And like I, the, the, the no fear factor is insane. So I went by myself. I went down to this line of trees and I experienced what I can only describe as 
um, subtle reenaction of a battle that happened in during the Civil War. Uh, I could hear gunfire. I could uh, hear like distant yelling. I saw what looked like misty anomalies, like going walking through the trees, uh, and then they would dissipate. And I'm standing there looking at it, trying to rationalize it. Like w- this doesn't make any sense. Why is it happening? I even went and brought a friend back, and he experienced it. Um, and I went into the line of trees, uh, to, to see if I could have more experiences. And again, I heard footsteps and I could hear the things. Well, now what's interesting about this activity is I say it is residual, right? right? It to me is like a piece of film being played back mm-hmm. in a moment and it can happen once it can happen every day. It can happen once a year. Um, and there's no rhyme or reason to it, but I think the universe was like, this is your time. You are, I'm, we're going to gift you this thing to experience so that you can take it with you uh it's going to propel the next chapters of your life and i think that is why it happened now when we bring people back there and like i brought amy my partner on on kendra spirits and i brought greg and dana back there like they experience similar things to what i experienced all those years ago so it's not i'm not making it up they've had experiences and then we, we, when we went back there recently in November, we were doing uh, an EVP session uh, d- out by the lake, which is where we ask questions to the recorder and you play it back and you can hear the answers. Um, and we said, you know, we don't care who's out here, but like, you know, we know that people fought for different sides, but you gave your life for something that you believed. Uh, so, you know, we want to recognize that and show respect to that. And it said, thank you. Mm-hmm. And it was the first time that I've gotten any response in that area that was like not residual right right so because a response is is intelligent they can hear you so while i was having residual activity now i have a whole nother catalog that i need to go explore like there's somebody out there that (sighs) said thank you to our conversation so some it's a bit bigger than i had probably anticipated um but that happened (laughs) and it stuck with it never So being so residual is it's kind of like you said, it's like a flash. It's like a picture that comes to life. It's not necessarily that all of these soldiers, so to speak, were still there as their individual selves haunting this area. It was more of of a residual experience as compared to a ghost that knows that they're there individually. I so my this is this is probably paranormal. Oh, okay. I'm going to I'm going to straight up say this. Yeah. I charge these MFs all day long <laughs> and they literally just died on me. They do not work. That's And there's a theory that like spirits can use things <clears throat> to pull energy from to like, and I have z- like, they do not work. And I could not hear anything you just said because I'm frantically sitting here trying to like open up a different <laughs> channel so I can hear you. I don't know if there's a ghost here. You need to find another place because I might work home with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's I am funny. so sorry, but I have zero clue what you said. There's a ghost in my house. And you the- <laughs> can you hear me? Hear me now? I can hear you. No, oh, I can okay. hear you now. But like, this is really That's strange. Wild. So, so Adam, we've had uh, we've had paranormal people in the studio, um, and we had uh, one of our resident paranormal. Uh, she's a witch. She. Yo, what is going on? What is <laughs> can you happening? hear? Can you he- hear us? I can, y'all. Yeah. Our whole system shut down. With so, Adam, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna tell you. I, I think I know. Um, you know, I, I lost my mom, and I hadn't really received any communication from her. I had a dream about her two nights ago. Um, that was my first kind of good afterlife experience I've had from her. It was brief, yeah. um, and then. Um, <laughs> this also happened. I'm starting to hear noises in my sleep that wake me up, like the door knocking, whatever. Somebody said medium, and then I woke up. I thought they were talking about sizes, like <laughs> t-shirt sizes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized, no, they're talking about the show. So I, I talked to my mom, because you said, you know, three times, like talked, and so on my way out of the house, and last night, I said, mom, I'm talking to Adam, you know, if you want to have something to say. So Adam, my mom used to be in the studio, she used to greet all of the guests, used to pour them the cocktails, she would read the book 
before I would to say, oh, make sure you ask that. She would hand me like a list of questions. So she was a big part of the show. So I think oh she's God. saying like, hello, because she was a strong personality. She'd be like, no, you listen to me. <laughs> like, oh, okay, Mama <laughs> yeah. Rose. Like her name, Dude, her nickname literally, was- Literally, she was like, are you going to seriously talk about dinosaur ghosts right now? <laughs> no, she, she'd be rolling her eyes. She'd be Are rolling you her seriously going to oh talk gosh. about dinosaur ghosts? Oh my gosh. She would be saying that too. Is it still recording? Of course she this? would. I mean, here's the thing. Listen, oh, you've got to look for the signs. What I love so much is like people ignore the signs that are in front of their face because no? they okay. seem to like not like – they seem to just want it to be on their own terms. Mm-hmm. And you the the paranormal and the supernatural do not work on those kind of terms. I mean, the fact that my headphones died and they were charged completely. I'm not saying our whole it, system it shut down. It's never no, happened. I'm not saying it's your mom. Uh, I have an idea. <laughs> but it's a way. It's a way. It's a way to get your attention. Yeah. It's like the little things that happen where you go, oh, no, I recognize exactly what that is. And sometimes it can be on a public platform. And then sometimes it can be so personal that it's only for you and it's only meant for you. Right. That was fresh. But it seems to me that your mother would be like, oh, no, I need everybody to know. That I'm in, I'm in charge. I'm here. That's that's her personality, Tony. Was that not her personality? She'd be your best friend, but she would lay down the law. It um, makes sense. So th- this is actually a, a good lead way into um, the next question because we got this a, a few different ways. Um, for those who have not seen Kindred Spirits, people want to know is um, how you communicate. Like, what tools do you use? And on Kindred Spirits, you use a variety of tools to talk to the other side, which I love. There's not yeah. one right. There's not one wrong way. Some tools work better than, than others. So how do you communicate with them? What is it that you're seeing or hearing? Um, how do you experience the paranormal? And I'm going to ask you this because I know you have a, like, you deal with guardian angels and all that, which is like a whole different side, too, but part of the same world. So, um, mm. Adam, what, what are some of the ways that you can Communicate. We talked about recording and playing back. Yeah. So uh, paranormal investigating is all about uh, having uh, things that you can use that are in front of you and tangible and everyone can see. Right. Uh, Usually when we're investigating, especially on television, I mean, you can't have a device that works. You can't be like, yes, we use psychics. And yes, I believe chip coffee more than, you know, Um, but it's like, I needed something that they can interact with. So every single device that we use uh, uh, is meant to record a natural or electromagnetic field, right? Like it is something that I know this device does this, it records this. And the theory is that uh, when spirits or uh, ghosts interact with us, uh, they act. They use that electromagnetic field to interact with those devices, right? So I know that this device reads something, and that theoretically they can manipulate the vi- the device because they're made up of the same energy. Um, and so we use a number of tools that have those qualities in different forms. Uh, some are less aggressive, like some look like uh, lanterns or teddy bears or things that don't look, uh, that that would look like, uh, could live in their world. You know, we don't want to scare them. Um, but we use those kind of devices. We use uh, recorders. Uh, we use uh, uh, sensory deprivation. Like uh, the Estes method is where you listen to static uh, radio frequencies. You're blindfolded, you have headphones, and I'm listening to the uh, device. My friend is asking questions, and I interpret what I hear on the device, but I have zero clue what she's asking and I have, I don't know what she's saying. Um, so if my answers match up to her questions, then possibly they're communicating with us. So we're using things that we can, uh, you know, tangibly explain how the devices work and we can uh, record the activity. But we're also using uh, history, research, genealogy, uh, interviews. We are digging as deep as we possibly can on the property, like who's lived here, who was here 300 years ago. Uh, We're asking all of these questions in an environment where um, specifically the family of the house would not know who owned the house 300 years ago. It's just not something that would happen. So we bring up those names. We try to piece together the facts with the activity 
to determine who we think is in the house uh, uh, from those two standpoints. Because when you match facts with activity, uh, the odds are whoever's there is is the person that you're trying to talk to. Um, uh, and then we also do, uh, we use psychics. Uh, Chip Coffee comes in. We use him as a tool. He I love it. Chip. Yeah, we love, love, we love Chip. To death. Say, you know, he's a tool in our tool bag. And, and yeah, those scarves? Right like, where's the Chip Coffee line of scarves, by the way? <laughs> Listen, I want one. He's got them, girl. Go to his website. <laughs> I wanna you want to buy one. A plethora of scarves. And, and my favorite thing about Chip Coffee <laughs> is, like, Chip will, like, you know, he will come in. He'll he'll know nothing about the case. He's like usually we pick him up down the road at a Walmart or something, and we bring him to the house. And because he, he's always at Walmart, why? <laughs> well, no, because we make him listen. Because we fly him into a location. He has he knows what town he's going to, but he has zero clue where the property is. Yeah. And so oh, we want to keep yeah. we want to keep everything very neutral, right? From because we want a clean reading. We take all the family photos down in the house if we're doing a house. You know, uh, we we had to blindfold him to get him into Lizzie Borden because he knows he yeah. knows Lizzie Borden, right? So we had to pick him up on a bench in Fall River, and anybody in <laughs> New England knows how dangerous that can be. Yeah. So we we you know we bring him to these locations, and when he walks through, everything that he says, like sometimes he says things, and we're like, oh my god, we already have that in our bag. Like we already know that that is true. Because we have facts, like yeah. newspaper articles, or we have ancestry to back that up. And then he'll say things that don't necessarily match up, which we keep in our back pocket. At the time. For a right. day. For it, like it, later it, time. So we use those kind of tools. Um, we've done tarot. Uh, our friend Dana Newkirk is one of the best hedge witches in the country, in the world, in my opinion. Um, and she has, we brought her to houses. I was like, you know, throw a set of tarot and let's see what happens. We were investigating the Proctor House in Salem, Massachusetts, you know, uh, part of the famous witch trials. Yep. Um, it's in it's in Peabody, for those of you who are really interested in it. It's actually in Peabody, but it was part of Salem during the witch trials. And, you know, on live television, Dana threw tarot to, I said, let's just throw some tarot and see what the what the night may hold for us. Yep. She th threw the devil card three times. <laughs> and, then, and then when we came back to actually investigate for kindred spirits, she threw the devil card twice. And people are like, oh, the devil card. It's like, that's not actually that's not I what mean, it means. It yeah. can mean the devil, but it, it actually meant that we were the problem. Because you're talking about a bunch of investigators in a Puritan's environment yeah. looking doing something that would be considered witchcraft, witchcraft in the time of Salem. And so it's like we use all of these elements that are that are available to us, uh, scrying. We're not afraid of we, literally, we're just not afraid of anything. We're not like we're going to use equipment and that's all we're going to use. We're going to use the tools and the elements available to us to access the other world because why not? We don't know. You know, why not? Something today may work. Something tomorrow may not. And depending on the spirit, they might respond to something like, you know, if you're talking to my grandma, if you talk to her in religious tone, she would respond. You do tarot. She'd be like, I know. <laughs> like no, no, exactly. Yeah, and what I love about the book, you also talk about that. Um, you respect spirits, their culture, their religion, and sometimes it's not the best case for you, or you bring in uh, a, a specialist, such as somebody who might have um, have uh, you know been a practitioner of Islam, yeah. or yes. depending, or a, a language barrier. Not you all goats speak English, by the way. <laughs> right. You cannot pretend to know everything. Like in this, in, in our in our whole thing, it's like, I do not know everything. I know a lot of things based on my experiences, but I, I do not know everything. So, and, you know, I'm an expert in some things because I know these things, but I'm not necessarily the ultimate expert. There's always something to learn. And so when we're doing a case, we will bring in a shaman, a priest, no. uh, anyone who we think uh, can give us information or do something that we cannot do, like Dana. I do not read tarot. I do not, uh, you know, I, I don't know how to set up a scrying mirror, but they do. Greg and Dana do. And so we will bring them into our investigation. And we're not afraid of that because that is how you get results. And that is how you get answers for those that are non-living, for those that you want to help. Adam, hearing a response from the afterworld, so the first time you ask a spirit a question and you hear the answer back on recording or however, 
that must change your whole outlook on life when you're actually talking to somebody that's passed over. And we, you and I have talked about this before. Um, you don't make a firm statement like, this is what I believe after death, because it's ever evolving, as it should be. From each experience, right. what you believe today could be different than tomorrow. And you kind of don't want to set that like trap for yourself. But I want to know from that moment, hearing that first response, how that changed your outlook on t- everyday life and how that changed you as a person. You're literally talking to somebody that has passed. Yeah, I mean, the very first EVP I ever heard was help me. Um, and so hearing something like that, I as a, at, back then I was like, yes, I, I'm so excited for this. You know, I hear something. Um, but now when you think about that, those two words, help me, are so intense and powerful. And so I go, what is that? Now I'm like, what does that mean? What does that mean? Help me. Uh, yes. Okay. What can I do? What can I do? Right. That's my next my next question. Um, what's, what's interesting is we've investigated, I've, in, I've done so many investigations and like I've investigated so many different places. And so when you get that first response on investigations now, to me, it is the door. It's like literally the key being inserted in the lock. That's it. That's it. Because you could get nothing else. And so it's up to you to continue to ask the questions and to continue to engage respectfully and like evolve your questioning so that the key turns turns and eventually the door unlocks but when the door unlocks that still you still have to get it open yeah so you're always working and you're always pushing forward into the investigation so i get very excited when i get that first evp but that is literally the the my like the very tip of the iceberg there's so many other things that have to happen in order for you to reach the ultimate goal which i think is to help those on the other side figure out what they need and what they want so that they continue continue their own journey in the afterlife, whatever that journey is for them. Derek, I want to know how you experience, um, you know, you deal with past life and spiritual coaching. How do you see things? Um, well, on, on, this, on this discussion topic, I will get a vision of what, like I can go into a meditation thinking I'm going to go relax. And then all of a sudden, I'll see a spirit or a person show me the entire scene of why they're still connected to it. So I'll literally have psychic visions all the time. And if, if I go into a meditative state, they'll show me this is how they died. Like one, like the first thing that comes to mind is the bride. There was a bride that looked like it was in the 1950s, maybe 60s. And she was curly haired, blonde, a doily looking kind of like wedding dress, a wooden church, and she would not show me her eyes. And she kept going like this. And then I'd say, I was like, you can go, it's okay to go to the light. I, I try to help spirits move into the light when they're showing me sadness or anger. And she would just kept turning away from me like that. So what they'll do is they'll show me the scene of why they're still connected to this dimension um, and, and what the trauma is. And sometimes I see very graphic things. I'll see how somebody died because they were in a sexual experience and then they were getting, you know, choked or something like that. And then it turned into the person dying. I will get everything from different things, but I will see it as a vision, a flash, or it'll like play out as if I'm watching a little clip and it'll do a little like loop kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it just depends. And then I'll send them, but I get visitations from other entities that are not disembodied spirits that are not spirits that were once living here and moving on. I'll get everything up and down the rainbow that I have to kind of navigate or work with. So it's always a new experience and ever evolving like we're talking about. And I know you've dealt with like guardian angel type figures, which for me being raised uh, Catholic and all that deals with all the Christianity and like, like the angel from God and all that, which I have a, I have a problem with because my own dealing with religion, but that's not really what a guardian angel is, right? No, and uh, your interpretation of a guardian, everyone's interpretation of a guardian angel is going to be very different. And sometimes what people think is a guardian angel is actually another light being or entity or 
energy from another realm or dimension. It just like we were discussing earlier, it's so vast that you can't put a grip on it and say one thing is one thing because whatever's going to fit someone's consciousness is going to be the experience they're going to have. So I could think that it's an angel and I see a vision and I go, oh, there's an angel, there's wings and they watch over me. But that being could be showing me what makes me feel comfortable with them just to know that I'm working, that this is an energy I'm working with. Where does this being come from? They all different places. So you're looking at if there's a spirit energy that's working with you, it could be somebody that's passed on, an ancestor or somebody that's moved on. And that's their new role. Yeah. And that mm. could be what they do. Like my grandmother, for example, was with me in ancient Egypt as a grandfather. And I saw it in a whole past life experience. But in this lifetime, she was my grandmother. She's literally the only spirit being that will come through and show me impulses. Here and there, mm. she drops in and I see her. But out of all the other family members that have passed, I don't see that. That's mm. interesting. Yeah. Uh, we have so much to talk about. Um what, what, Let's what? go. This is a two-hour episode. <laughs> <We're on. laughs> what I love about Goodbye Hello is um, it talks about grief in, in a positive light. Grief is the most unifying thing we have on this planet. Everybody experiences loss. Everybody will experience grief regardless of your race, sexuality, income, uh, gender, everything. Um, and the way you put it is so beautiful. And I know you have different thoughts, by the way, of leading people to the light, you, you in, in your book, you talk about this. You're like, s some of these spirits need to finish this journey here or however they're trapped. They don't need to head to the light right now, or I'm not going to force them to go to the light because they still have this journey here. Um, you present everything. What I want to say to the audience <laughs> is read the book, because if you're looking for answers, what happens after we die? Is there a God? Is there this? You answer it all without s answering it all. Because you well, present even, all of these cases without, there's no definitive answer. So, that was fresh. The thing is, I guess I wanted to present the clearest argument for every single thing that people always talk about, right? But my answer to the argument might not be your answer, right? Based on what you experience in your own life and what you believe. And so I, this wasn't a guide on how to grieve or guide to what you should feel. It is, it is a series of ideas and chapters on what you, what I think that maybe can unlock something for you if you need it. Right. So when you're talking about crossing over, like I would prefer, I think personally, I think any entity that is on this side of in this plane, there's a reason for it, right? And I want them to figure out what that journey is and whatever I can do to facilitate that next step for them, right? Whether it's prayer, whether it's uh, a community, just conversation, whether we can just like have this moment, whatever that is, I want them to have it so that they can process it on their own and then do with it what they will, which is exactly what we want in this, in this life. Uh, in this life, you go through it and people help you and people enter your life and they exit your life and they give you advice and, and they, and they treat you like crap and then they love you at the same time. But it's for you to decide what to do with all of that information. Right. And I think it is exactly the same thing on the other side. And we just have to give them those kind of boundaries. So um, the book is a lot of hard, difficult things to think about. Hopefully in an uh, in a lighthearted way. <laughs> no, you know? that's what I have to. I, I have mean, to stress on the book. It's very entertaining because you bring your personality to it. And what I also and th these are comments I got from your fans as well is you don't treat the paranormal as some separate precious thing that a few people have access to. You joke. I mean, you're wearing a ghost on your shirt right now. You know, well, <laughs> I see your boobies. Get it. At boobies. Ooh, boobies. Yes. Get it. Yes. Yes. No, but it. Here's the thing. Like you're an Amy's friendship. It totally reads through on Kindred Spirits. That's a real yeah. friendship. Audiences can see through bullshit very fast. But yeah. you bring this levity to the book. You bring it to your uh, your appearances. You bring the humor into it. You know, we treat the paranormal as like some special thing. And it is a very special thing, but it's it should be part of our daily lives, which includes humor, which in 
includes optimism. Not every ghost story is a sad story. Um, and no. what you share, you, you share some very positive stories in the book as well. But it's like, it's not some taboo thing that we have to hush around like in church. We right. celebrate well, and also, the afterlife and also, grief is you, for us. Yeah, and you brought up church, like, you know, I grew up Southern Baptist, right? I was put in a box. I and you spoke told- in tongues, by the way. <laughs> uh, you did? No, you did. <laughs> I did not. Didn't you? Oh, I, th- I thought, oh. there's a rumor going around that you used to speak in tongues. <laughs> Here it is. There it is. I'll ask your there's husband if you speak in I tongues. Don't. Listen, I only speak <laughs> in tongues. Take another sip. Because if I had too many vodka sodas, I'd yeah. speak in tongues. <laughs> But I love that you make the paranormal more accessible to all of us because we, we all have we all have the capacity, I believe. And a part of your book also, when you talk about uh, life after death experiences or near death experiences, it's because, you know, we only use a small percentage of our brain and you bring research into this. Right. People that are near death, their brain is not focusing on the bodily functions and there's certain parts of the brain that are activated. And on that activation... Our brains, and who knows in the future whether we're going to be able to activate that on our own, but it makes us deal with different dimensions, different planes. And this is not some mumbo jumbo. This is scientific fact. We move in a certain dimension in a different plane as our brain can comprehend. And this leads Mm -hmm. me into a question. We got this so many different ways from your fans and also from skeptics. Since you're talking to the dead, why don't you just point blank ask them, is there heaven? Do you see Jesus? Where are you? Yeah. So we've asked that many times. Uh, the there was a case that we did uh, in New York where the his her ex husband, uh, who we thought was in the house, uh, uh, was not religious at all. And so we asked him once we con- made connection with him, we were like, "Do you believe in heaven?" And he said yes. And then we started asking him questions about it, but he wouldn't respond. And so this is an overarching theme. Uh, overarching theme in the book. Uh, And it is literally like there comes a point where the afterlife speaks about what is next. And then the majority of them of spirits that we interact with, whether it's through your dreams or whether it's in person, we we're recording their answers through a recorder or they're interacting with us with equipment. They say, I cannot tell you anymore because there are no words in the English language to describe what it is. I cannot explain to you what it is because I have no vocabulary when I'm speaking with you. And I think that is on purpose because as any faith or religion points out, like you've got to have faith, right? If they were to say a hundred billion percent, this is what's next. Yeah. Uh, there would be people in this life that would say, cool, screw it. I'm done. I don't care. Right? If we're going to uh, end up this way, they would way, give no effort to this environment. They would give no effort to this journey. They would give no effort to the uh, the process, whatever we're going through now, right? Like, this is a journey. This is something to be excited about. Whether, it, and, it, and by the way, the world is on fire and it sucks. But like, this is it. Right. And there's something to be learned from this experience. And then when you're done with that experience, you go on to the next journey. And if we were to know a thousand percent what that next journey was, we would never give any effort into this experience. And I think it is on purpose that they cannot explain what it is. Um, And I think that's a blessing because it makes you live in the here and now. It makes you look at the person in front of you and say, yes. I want to hang out with you. Yes, I want questions. Yes, please come to my house. Let's do this podcast. Let's like hang out and meet new people and share new ideas. Let's explore what the world has to offer because the world that we live in now is made for the living. It is not made for the dead. We can see, feel, hear, touch, Mm. love, respect, uh, interact. And then once that journey stops and we go to the next, if we stay behind we, you know, have unfinished business or we have something that we need to complete before we continue into that next world, which is made for them. It's made for us in a different time, like in the next step, if that makes sense. And and to Um, the point of your book too, grief, grief is really about us. Our loved ones have Mm -hmm. moved on to some other level, whatever, whatever that is, they're not dealing with the daily 
shit that we have to deal with. Grief is really about us because we're sad that they're not. They always say, I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm okay. And and that's when you. They don't have to, to count calories. Like I'd be okay. <laughs> right? They don't I mean, have to count calories. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and beyond all of this, like uh, the holidays are very hard. And I know you're, I mean, like Alex, 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 Alexander, Alex, Alexander. Uh, don't make my mom Alexander. shut the system down again. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. She I, never I, let I me go by trouble. Alex. Yeah. I don't want any trouble. Okay. Mama God. Rose. <laughs> Alexander. Oh, um, yeah. I like, you know, the holidays are harder than I know you're dealing with something. Yeah. And I, and I know that it, 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 it hits in different ways for everybody, but every time that I hang up that ornament that makes me think of my grandmother or every time that I put something out or I make her cornbread in her cast iron skillet mm. to me, she's here. Her hands are with me. Her hands are my hands and we are making something together. And that can never be changed or taken away from you at all, no matter what anyone says. And I have Whether to tell you both or not. And I have to tell you, your book kind of empowered me because I thought this holiday, th- Thanksgiving was tough. I'm not going to lie yeah. that it wasn't tough. So what I did is I took that day, I put the tree up, I took out all of our family stuff in my new place. And I thought it was going to depress me, but it really, like you said, I took such joy in putting out stuff that my mom and I shared year after year, my grandma and I shared. It's like, this is my new space, and it filled me with such joy. It was bittersweet, and of course I was a little sad, but it was more positive. And I was like, Mm -hmm. it's going to be okay, because I took such joy in the memories. And that's what our loved ones want. They don't want us... I know it sounds cliche. They don't. They don't want you to suffer, but they don't because they're doing something else. Yeah. Um, I have two other, and I, I I know we're running short on time. Two other major, and I have tons of questions about you personally from your fans. By the Cares, way, listen, we're gonna have Can to we do make it an hour two? and a half. No, <laughs> no we can't. <laughs> no, I I wish we could. We're we're gonna have to do a, a part two. Um, another thing, and this is something that I I was tearing through the pages for when we lose somebody that's so close to us, and everybody's like. They're still with you. And then we're looking like, you know, like canine. We're, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're like looking, looking, looking for messages or signs or something. And you talk about this as well connected as you are with the afterlife. People that you have lost in your own circle, they're not phoning you up. Like, hey, nope. girl. They're not. No. Nope. I wish they were. I wish they'd be like, hey, girl, hey, can we like have a conversation? No, they're yep. not. And I... Uh, I mean, in the book I talk about, I think it's because the ones that I really want to connect with, um, uh, they were very religious. They believed that their next step in life was to be in heaven, right? To be with God. And I think that's where they are. You know, uh, I think everyone's afterlife might be a little bit different. Uh, and so I think they don't want to intrude because they don't need anything or they don't want anything. So, uh, no, they have not. They have not made an appearance uh, and I prefer it that way because if I see my grandmother standing at the end of the bed while my husband <laughs> and I are in it, I will be not okay with that at all whatsoever. She's gonna she's gonna be in for a super surprise. <laughs> she might give you some tips. You never know. <laughs> you listen. She'd be like, Le- "Your leg needs to." No, no, no. Oh my god. <laughs> And Gertrude's going to show up with her lip. Gertrude. And be like, hey, girl, Gertrude be I like, told you. Honey, yeah. honey, you're doing it wrong, honey. What? <laughs> <laughs> that was her husband. Wow. Yes. He's like, where, what is this podcast turned into? But, but let's talk about for somebody that's expecting that, they're going through the worst grief they could ever experience. Yeah. And they think we were so close, even having conversations. When I go, I'm going to come back and haunt you, ha ha ha. And then mm-hmm. there's nothing. Yeah. What do you say to somebody that's going through that, that's expecting, well, we loved each other so much, there has to be a sign yeah. or a message? So I think I think the word expecting is a mm. very heavy word, mm. right? You expect it, which means you demand it, which means mm. you, uh, it has to happen. And it doesn't have to happen. And so what I say to people um, uh, is, Focus on yourself, focus on your journey, because your journey does not end with their with their passing. Your journey has to continue. 
So focus on the journey forward, right? Grieve them, uh, respect their memory, honor them in every way that you want to. And then when it is time, if they feel like they need to come to you, they will. And you may find it in the smallest of things. I, you know, uh, dimes are a recurring thing that happen where you find dimes where you just clean the entire table and there's a dime. You're like, that makes no sense. But maybe the date has some significance or uh, animals. Uh, for me, I think a, a butterfly, a monarch butterfly appeared out of nowhere, just came down and like hung out with me, almost landed on my finger after my friend died. And I know yeah. it was where it was literally next to where he used to work. And I was like, oh, no, I know it's him. Right. It is something very personal. Uh, it is something that uh, that it's only for you. Uh, it's not for the world. Like everybody, it's so it's so crazy with social media. Like everything is for everyone, but no, yeah, some things are just for you, and these are those things. It's the small, tiny moments that you realize uh, that person is that. That's who it is. You may not even be thinking about them, and then all of a sudden, something happens, and you think about them. That's a thing. That's literally a thing. There's also the danger when somebody like myself is going through such intense grief yeah that i would everything depend becomes fair, everything becomes yeah fair. and i would be dependent on that and i yeah. wouldn't go through my own grief process yeah. to let go listen you can't do it they the the biggest thing that you have to take away from the book and from just like this conversation is like they are on to the next journey they and are we should on respect to that let them do that thing. let them do it and if they choose to come back, good. If they don't, good. It's n- like it doesn't make any difference in your life. It might make you feel better if they did, but that's the lesson that you have to learn at the time. That was fresh. Okay, next, and like I said, we have pages and Rapid pages fire. Just let's do rapid. I love a good <laughs> rapid fire. But these are like, like complex, everything. I'm ready to go. I'm ready. Uh, one of the reasons I, I wanted Derek to join is, and you touch on this in your book, is past lives. Adam. Yeah. Oh, yes. So, so during your paranormal investigations, when did you first come into the theme of past lives? Never. But... I, before I even started, like I was investigating and like ghosts was a, it was a hobby for me. I was working at the West End Salon in Provincetown, Massachusetts. Some listeners may know where this is. I was the um, manager uh, at this salon and I was working here (laughs) year round because we had been living in Provincetown for for a while. And uh, this lady came in and she was like, I do past life regression. And I was like, cool, boo, cool for you. And like, I whatever, you know, I loved ghosts, but I was like, what's this, what is this girl yeah. saying to me? Yeah, yeah. And it was probably, it was late at night off season. And she was like, can I give you a past life reading? And I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and she, she goes, she looks at my, I don't know what she looked at. I don't even, I can't even remember if it was my astrology chart or if she just like looked at me. And she said, what's the thing uh, you you and British, the British, the British flag? And I was like, oh, girl. OK, so in college, I had I had an obsession with the British flag. I can't even talk about it. I love all things Brit. Like, I just love. And she goes, interesting. And she sat down for a minute and she didn't say a word. And she said, you know, you were a soldier. She goes, you were drawn to Boston, weren't you? And I was like, yeah, I was. And she goes, you were a revolutionary soldier left for dead in the winter. Do your feet get cold first? And I was like, yeah, they do actually. And so like, I, I, I mean, I'm getting, I'm maybe getting, I'm getting the conversation completely wrong, but she pinpointed things about my life at that, that moment made sense. or that had happened that was so specific that nobody would have known any of the information. And she said to me two things. She said, you were this soldier. You were left for dead. Your feet get cold. You have an affinity for the British flag. I love British culture. Like, I'm obsessed. Um, And then she said to me, you have another life where you were in, like, uh, a dynasty uh, during China, like maybe the Ming dynasty. or And uh, this scholar, you were a scholar. 
and he is he's jealous of your outgoing personality, but his advice is to read a book. So I grew up reading books constantly. I read books I cover to cover. But when I got to college, I had no time. Right. And there had been a period of like eight years where I just didn't read anything. I was yeah. just like, I'm not going to read it. I don't have time. Right. I'm focusing on the out outrovert, like the, you know, being an outgoing person. And she was like, he wants you to finish a book. When you finish a book, it will change. And I was like, what does that mean? He goes, I don't know. That's what it means. And so like any good gay, I read Patti Lapone's biography. <laughs> oh my God. That's literally <laughs> on my living room table right now. Oh my. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. And I'm she Patti Lapone, and I'm going to talk like this and you're going to listen to me. That's Patti Lapone. I'm going to talk. Oh, <laughs> what are you doing? Patti Lapone. You have any money? Oh, listen. <laughs> she, I read Patti Lapone's biography right in which she talks about meeting the ghost of Eva Perone. Yes. Uh, her opening night of yes. Eden. Yep, 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 yep. And so. From that moment of finishing that book, it, you know, maybe she was doing me a good piece of advice. You should. But like, <laughs> I finished that book and it sort of unlocked something for me where mm. I was like in, I was like back into my like reading thing again. And, you know, that was, a, it was, a, it was sort of like she was giving me life lessons from the, from my app, from my past lives that I needed to consider in this new life. So that I could make the most of this journey, right? Because there's going to be other journeys. And so literally, I don't think I could have written this book if I had not had that moment to be like, you know, oh, you should finish your finish your books. She was like, you always start books, but you don't finish them. And that mm. is was 100% mm, true. Yeah. So as soon as I finished a book, I finished the next book and I finished the next book and I finished the next book and I finished the next book. Um, and I was able to write a book. So I think... It has some it has some greater meaning that I don't Everything understand. Is. And it's the only time I've ever allowed any psychic whatsoever to give me any sort of reading. Uh, because now people come up to me and like, can I can I tell you something? I'm a psychic and I want to tell you something. And I say no, because I don't know a who they are. <laughs> I don't know if they're uh, I don't know their capabilities. And for me, I'd rather figure it out on my own. And if it comes to me in a weird way, yeah. I prefer that. And but, so that was a weird way. Like she she came, she came for me. She came for a, you. Right. <laughs> so, so, Derek, quickly, I want to know uh, you're a past life regressionist. What yes. does that mean? Like, I, I'm what, ready for this. Yeah. <laughs> what is what is kind of that process? First, and, and why do we need it? Yeah. Um, and like, what is that process? If I were to get a regressionist session, wh what would that look like? Yeah. First of all, I have to say that is how you know that your mom is with you. I just have to say that. That's Patti all Lepone. I heard. It was like the fact that that he said that that was the book and that's what you have on your so, coffee table. Adam, I have, to, I have to tell yeah. you, the first time I ever met Patty Lapone was because she was in Palm Springs. And it was the first time I saw her in person. I was obsessed from Evita, from everything obsessed. My mom yeah. wrote her so many letters as a mom that when we went to Palm Springs, we went to the stage door hoping she was going to go to her limousine and sign. Her road manager came out and she says, is there an Alexander Rodriguez here? And I was with my mom and grandma. I was invited to her dressing room. I, as yeah. this gay boy, like I flipped out. And we have oh pictures God, of yes. it. But it's because my mom was such a bully, so to speak. She yeah. was Mama Rose. She yeah. wrote no, some no, letters. No. She like, wasn't a bully. She wasn't a bully. She was, she was Ma persuasive. Mama Rose. Yeah. <laughs> she was persuasive. It's her rule. Persuasive. Yep. But this whole Patty LaPone connection, it's so crazy. Anyway. Okay. No, that's that's why I had to. I was like, I know you're asking me a question about me, but like I had to say that because that was very significant and special. So make sure that you unpack that little thing later. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, but for past life regression, you know, some people come to me because it's fun. They're like, I'm just curious. I want to know if I have a past life or if this is even real. Some people don't believe it. But it's not like reading tarot. It takes no. a lot of energy. Um, it's not it just can. a fun thing. I do a specific, so there's different methods. I do QHHT, which is quantum healing hypnosis technique. So a session with me, I get you into a really deep state of trance. A lot of it's trust too. You have to trust me. I don't go seeking people. I If people come to me looking for one, then I will work with them because I don't, I don't believe in being like, hey, 
Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. you need this. You're not like passing out. Right. Car, no. But, yeah. but people come to me seeking me for um, a, a deeper healing and quantum healing is going into other lifetimes that are connected to this lifetime. If they're going through a traumatic experience or cycles and patterns, they want to transcend that and they can't seem to get over it. And a lot of the times it's connected to a past lifetime that they're re- that they have the same kind of energy. Everything's vibration. So I tell everybody, whatever you see, because I don't tell you your passive i can do akashic records readings too but like i can re- you and your past lives i can <laughs> i was like like it was like downloading the whole time you were speaking but what i want you to do is i want you to see it i want you to go through it like the way i went through it the very first time i saw it i saw myself yeah. as this beautiful egyptian woman i was at the temples i was at the nile river i had a little hut next to the to the the palace like i want you to experience it because i don't want to just you you to take the information and go oh yeah i believe what he says i want you to experience the magic of a past life regression so i'll get you into a deeper level of trance mm-hmm. like a deep meditation and then i ask open ended questions i'll activate you i'm a very big and what i do i activate people's um energy bodies or i activate their chakras I activate your capabilities to receive psychic information. And a lot of that comes down to you trust me. If you don't trust me, you're blocking the receptivity to energy. So in the regression... That's even the case, Adam, with you with spirits. You have to build that trust before they're going to blab their life to you or respond. Oh, yeah. I mean, you you have to... Literally, you have to walk into the room like you're entering a party where you know no one. Yeah. Yeah. You say, hi, my name is Adam. What is your name? And you that's where you start. Yeah. And so the trust that you build is a a trust that is that that's communication, that's understanding, that is observation. That I mean it's it's what we do in life. Yeah. Uh except they are just on a different, you know, plane than we are. That's a, and that's exactly what it is because everything in our life is relationships. We have a relationship with everything. 100%. And so we're evolving through our relationships. We're evolving. The, the, us just sitting here this time, we've learned and expanded so much in just this short amount of time. Everything is relationships. So when I have someone sit with me, we're not even doing the regression for like a block of time because I'm getting them to learn and to trust who I am so that they can be open to receiving. I get them into a deep state they allow the information to come forward and I just keep asking open-ended questions, recording the whole session so that you, and what the thing is, you can never have a psychic vision in your life. And I've had so many people go, oh my God, I saw everything. I could see my body. I could see me walking through it. I could see my husband or my wife, or I could see the people who killed me or what all the dramatics of it. Well, it, it says a lot for gender f- fluidity, by the way. Now we're talking about non-binary and all that. It's like, yeah. we all have that in us because some of us may have lived these lives yeah, sure. as, as other genders, other expressions. But my question is, and we got this email, skeptics, um, you know, past lives, got a bad rap when Shirley MacLaine came out and she says, oh, my past lives, and it became like a Hollywood joke. You know, and I hate to say it, but it, but it did. My point, and some of the emails we got is, if we're not allowed to remember our past lives, what good does it do us? If we can't, because having another life is to learn from our mistakes, but if we don't know where we've come from, what's the point of living life after life if we don't know how to learn from a life we don't know. In different teachings, people want you to focus on the life that you're in right now. And I understand that completely. You should be focusing on whatever's in front of you is asking something from you. You don't necessarily need to go into past lives in order to discover why it is you have a problem. It's about how you show up to the event that is in front of you, right? In any case, it doesn't matter if you're dealing with a spirit or you're dealing with a uh, like a, a girlfriend or boyfriend that's treating you wrong. Everything is asking you of something right in the moment. So I tell people, you don't have to have a past life. Let it be fun. Let it be something that's a discovery that you're learning more about your soul's history through. And the people I work with are typically the the people that are here to help evolve humanity. I find a lot of people are here to ha- are the teachers, are the channelers of media. They are the ones that I work with because they're the ones who are helping to open up the pathways of trust within the self and to allow them to understand that they're not as 
they're, they feel like they're so different or so isolated from everything. But really, they're the people that need to understand that you're different because you're the one that's to show the new path. Does everybody have a past life or do we get that choice? Um, yes and no. Like everybody does have, it depends on consciousness. And so I can't claim that for you. I can't claim that for you. But I will say that if you came from somewhere before this, wouldn't that be your past life? And even if you are simply a drop in the soul of the big pool of all that is, if you came out and let's say you've never had a human life before, but yet this is your first human life, wouldn't you say that you have a past life as something? A, a dinosaur? A dinosaur, apparently, to this one. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so. I'm getting a little <coughs> choked up. Anyway. Your mom needs to back off. Mom she is definitely here. <laughs> not be a choker right now. Anyway, we <laughs> have to do a part two because we have to wrap up. No. Adam, no! I know, I'm like... I refuse. No, ask we have to. Quest, ask me a personal question. Yeah. No, we literally have to stop. There's another show in oh. like three minutes. God bless Jesus. Hate <laughs> Christ. Adam, we come back for part two. Okay, fine. I Because I, I have pages. You, let's yeah. do it. I got time in December to talk about all this. Things. Perfect. And when are you coming to LA? You appear everywhere but LA. I know. You know why? Because it's so far. It's so far for me. It's it so is. far for me. It's kind of far. We'll talk about it. <laughs> Listen, and the Black Friday sales are crap. Okay? <laughs> Absolute crap. Let's it's bring it mind. back to Black I, Friday. I was listening to a little of 10%? Delta Work. I was listening to a little Delta Work, and she was like, why isn't Black Friday like Wendy's combos? Why can't you Wendy's combos of Black Friday? And that makes so much sense to me. They're giving away like free Frosties for like a year. Hello. Give yeah. it away. Give it. All right. We have to wrap up. Uh, like we literally do. Okay, um, fine. Adam, where can we find and follow you and buy your uh, oh. ghost shirt? So first off and foremost, uh, uh, adam-berry.com will get you to everything. Adam Berry merch will get you to this and all my things. Love it. Uh, Adam Berry books will get you to this. It's annoying. It's just annoying. <laughs> um, and there's me, the Audible book. Google Adam Berry ghost and you'll <laughs> find me wherever you need to find me. And there's the Audible version of the book too. Which I think honestly has gotten a, a lot of significant praise because it's my gay ass just narrating my own words, which was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. But I have to tell you, like yeah. I said, the book but is so intimate and friendly. I feel like we're hanging out at happy hour and you're telling mm. me these stories. Yeah. And when you hear, when you listen to the Audible and I do like, I do my friends' voices, I literally caricature them, uh, which is always oh, great because Chip Coffee's like, oh my God, I hate it. I love it. I love yeah. your <laughs> and so I do all the voices, which they allowed me to do in a, in, a, in a good way. And then, you know, I get emotional. We talk about really emotional things and you know, the death of my grandmother or the visitation from my grandmother or the death of my uh, you know, Chihuahua, Maria. It's yeah. like, it's like those things read in the, in the audio book. <sighs> All right. We definitely need a part two because I got so many questions about animals, by the way, too. Uh, well, I'm here for it. Yes. So let's schedule it. Okay. I have a good time <laughs> slot. <between> <laughs> we will get you in. Uh, Derek, where can people find and follow you? Derek-Jameson.com or at Derek Jameson on Instagram. Let's be friends. I love it. But these are the conversations we all should be having. Like we said, yes. grief is such a unifying thing. Yet there's a stigma talking about grief. There's a stigma about being sad. It's like being sad is as important as being happy because that's how we yeah. know we're living life and we should be able to express that. So this holiday season, um, reach out to somebody that you know might be a little lonely. Check in with everybody. Spend the holidays with who you want to, by the way. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's that's my other thing. All right, uh, that's all, folks. It's always a grab bag of fun here every week on The Rocks. Oh, my God, I wish we could talk for another hour. I know. Big thank you to our engineer and station owner, Tony Sweet, our social media clip editor, Alexis Mendez. Please like, share, subscribe, so we can continue bringing this fabulous program and coming your way. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, stay sexy. And if you drink, stay tipsy. Stay tipsy. Bye. Bye. At On The Rocks On Air. Find everything On The Rocks for free at ontherocksradioshow.com. Subscribe, like, review, and share. Until next week, stay fabulous. Thank God.